It's day five of the Gomeshi trial, and this morning we heard from the third complainant in this case. She alleges that in the summer of 2003, her and Gomeshi were in a park in Toronto. They were kissing, it was consensual, but then she says all of a sudden uh, she could feel his teeth on her neck or shoulder. And uh, she says that he placed his hands on her neck and she kind of lost her breath. And then she says when she tried to leave, he put his hand over her mouth, which she described as smothering. So she said she left the park, but now we have learned that they saw each other after the fact. So she gave a new testimony to the police, similar to some of the issues with the previous witnesses. She has given a new statement, adding some instances of what they call post-assault contact. So she says that after um, she saw him in the park, she was still unsure about him. So she described it as like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing. There was this really nice, charming Gomeshi, and, and then there was this Gomeshi who switched, who did this alleged assault to her. So she admitted that they had had romantic contact, what the Crown described as a romantic interaction um, after the effect in her apartment. Now the defense filed a special application in order to bring up other instances of sexual contact, either between her and Gomeshi or between her and another person, we're not sure. Uh, usually in a sexual assault trial, you are not allowed to bring up um, a witness's sexual history. That should not be relevant to whether or not the alleged assault took place. But in this case, we're going to see the defense have some opportunity to bring up some other instances. The Crown agreed to this, the judge approved it. So some of these instances may be subject to a publication ban. We're not sure how much we're going to be able to report or what, what we'll want to report. Um, but that's a tactic the defense is going to use is some other uh, parts of her sexual history that they think are relevant to this case.